once i was talking to a very wise man i said to that wise man that you have all the answers of all the questions you are very wise very intelligent you shown me very many great many path of the spirituality will you be my guru so i am ready to surrender myself if you accept me as a disciple yes she said i cannot be your guru i have some biasedness i am little biased if you find ever a non biased person in your life who is non biased mm-hmm. just go into the feet of that person he will be your guru but make sure the person should be non biased completely non biased so we are biased if i am biased it means i am an image only image can be a bias yes he simply meant if you meet a person without an image because if we see all the things like afflictions kleshas karma which is actions and karma, karma vipaka means a result of the fruits of the actions yes. this all are the things of image yes as long as there is an image you should not surrender it there is this religion islam who says you should not bow your head in front of anybody only in front of allah yes it makes sense here because only according to them allah is the only thing which is free from all this yes so because because if i bow my head means i surrender myself to an entity which is violent which is which have some kind of pain yes. so i will receive that pain to whom we bow we receive that if i respect if i give surrender myself for somebody who is violent then i be, i'm becoming violent i am becoming that to whom we surrender ourselves we become that yes so this is a very nature of human being also to surrendering you see there are, surrendering is not very serious act it's an act of love hmm. it's not a serious act it's an act of love it's an act of passion you can say there is a passion also in it yes F- for an example bollywood there are many star in bollywood actors there are some people those become a big fan of some particular actor let's suppose sanjay that is an actor many people are big fan of him so they started living a lifestyle like them hmm. they surrendered surrendering to sanjay so much they are loving him so much so his essence enters in them they start walking like that they start look they, even their face start looking like that their even physical features yeah. change a little bit copy everything the hairstyle the clothes copy, yeah, yeah. yeah but be sh- make sure to whom you are surrendering not yes. copying but surrendering yes it should be understood because copying is another thing that human do it very much right this have been happening last uh, thousands of year there is a yogi and others are just copying they are doing, doing copy of the characteristic of the yogi yeah not following the path of yogi but just trying to living as it is right like there was a guy mahavira mahavira the founder of jain religion yes this guy achieved this asampragya samadhi through his own path and he decided that i will not wear clothes i don't need it i have no attachment with clothes i can live without clothes he lives naked but people are not understanding the path he given yes. but they started living naked yes which is copying but copying will not take you anywhere no. so surrendering is not copying also right. about klesha if you ask me what kleshas are in in, in second chapter third sutra he describe about kleshas the afflictions what are the klesha he talks about five kleshas which we will discuss later but little bit i tell you there are avidya asmita raga dvesha avinivesha means ignorance self image attraction repulsion and fear of losing these five are the kleshas yes So Patanjali is here mentioning the entity which is free from kalesha is Ishvara. Is Ishvara. Who is free from all kind of pain. Right. So in that sense Patanjali is sort of defining the nature the uh, the force behind Ishvara. What does it mean? But he is not saying that there is he he's not guiding your mind to believe 
exactly who is Ishvara. He's saying you might find Ishvara in somebody on earth, you might find Ishvara in nature, you might find Ishvara yeah. in animals. So it's up to you uh, in whom exactly. you find Ishvara, but these are the qualities of Ishvara. Qualities. Yeah, they are free from pain, they are serving the existence without any desire, they are not doing actions for the result of action. There are actions, but there is no desire for, of yes. the result. Yes. That is Ishvara. So that's why we see in India, there are 3.3 uh, million gods. Yeah. There are nowhere in any religion, in Christianity, in Islam, you don't find there is only one god. But here there is a cow is a god, river Ganga is a god. Yes. There is a sun is a god, moon is a god. People have to keep on deciding their own gods. Hmm. Wherever they feel that I can surrender here, they surrender, it become god. Right. Actually, Devina, it doesn't matter to whom we are surrendering like very much. Only the thing is, the person should be free, free from afflictions, pains. What is main thing to understand here? The art of surrendering. It is a little bit confusing at this point because on one hand, uh, again, we are in a way relating Ishwara with God. The word God can be uh, replaced by the creator or life force or the supreme. Uh, but if at the same time, we're also defining the characteristics as basically one free from afflictions. And like you rightly said, in India, maybe I find and that condition in a river. But yeah. that doesn't make the river the source of creation. But when right. we think so of see. God, we think of the creator. So what's, how do we understand the difference here? Understand it. What is, what is the quality of Ishvara again more? Let's enter in the next sutra. It's saying, Tatra Nirtishayam Sarvabijam. The next sutra, sutra number 25. Tatra Nirtisham Sarvabijam means in, in Ishvara, there is the seed of limitless omniscience. Means Ishvara is Ishvara is carrying a possibility inside to whom we are surrendering. Who is free from this? A person, let's suppose a person in society who's free from afflictions, uh, desires, and all. If I surrender myself there, it looks like outside is nothing. It's just like a normal human being. Like it's not like a god or something. But the person is carrying a seed the quality as a seed of limitless omniscience. Seed means possibility. Seed is nothing but a possibility. Yes. You see the power of a seed. It looks like a very simple, small thing. Yes. Very hard, you know, very small. But yes. if we sow a seed in the ground, it becomes a tree. Yes. Tree gives thousands of fruits. Thousands of fruits give millions of seeds. Yes. Millions of seeds can become millions of trees. Yes. Millions of trees can become again trillions. It can become a whole jungle. Yes. But it always starts from a seed. Yes. Which is a possibility. Yes. Similarly, in that Ishwara, there is a seed hidden inside, which is a possibility. A seed of limitless omniscience. This is limitless omniscience, the universe. Yes. The seed of the universe is in Ishwara. Every person. If we go into the another yogic text, Bhagavad Gita, there is a conversation between Arjuna and Sri Krishna. Yes. So Arjuna asked to Krishna, show me your real self, who you are. So how it is written, metaphorically, so Krishna opens his mouth and shows the whole universe inside the mouth. He said, look at me, I am this. Yes. And in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is mentioned as Bhagavan, means Ishwara. He is mentioned as Ishwara. Yes. Krishna is Ishwara there. So here I say Ishwara and existence, the universe are not two different things. To whom we are surrendering is having that seed. As the seed. seed. You, yeah. If you give proper water, proper soil, proper sunlight to it, it can become a tree. Right. It can become fruit and it can spread it as a jungle complete. Yes. It has a lot of energy inside. So that's our, um, our purpose. Our purpose is to 
give that uh, first of all to recognize and to give that uh, respect and energy to um, the seed of limitless possibilities exactly. and we are offering that in return what we can get is a limitless existence because that's what yeah, that but, we not, but, but we are not desiring surrendering means not desiring because if i'm surrendering there is no there is no politics inside there is not like i'm surrendering so i'll get that there is nothing like i am just surrendering the moment i surrender it happens itself yes i'm telling you we cannot become spiritual we cannot become meditative meditation is spirituality happens itself yes we should have a right intention yes there are these three sutras the first 23rd sutra which is talking about one can surrender to ishwara yes. and reach to the highest consciousness which is universal consciousness yes. Asam Pragya Samadhi. And then we understood that Ishwara is one who, who is free from pain, afflictions, actions and the result of the actions. Who is free from that. Yes. Third, we understand that, that Ishwara is carrying the limitless omniscience as a seed inside. Yes. That's it.